So it's look cool, but the dashboard's now apart. It's time to do the MBT retrofit. Guys, this video I've been, not planning, but I've been thinking about for probably about two years. I've been trying to get my head around how to do these MBT retrofits because it's definitely not straightforward. And the way that BMW upgraded the infotainment systems in the cars as you went through E-Series, F-Series, and now G-Series, they managed to integrate modules, I guess, back in the day when the E92 was new, they had separate modules for the telecommunications unit, the MOLF module, the CD stacker, everything was sort of separated and then was connected on its own bus. Uh, you've then got the amplifier that's on the MOST bus. Uh, and even now, the last two days I've been reading about these systems to get the wiring done for this MBT retrofit and it's bloody complicated. There's so many different variations between the business nav, the entry level iDrive and then the pro iDrive or whatever they called it through the different generations. There's so many combinations and so many different ways to integrate into one of these cars. It's, it's, it's too hard to get my head around. So let me preface it with this. This is not a step-by-step -step DIY. I kind of, I kind of chickened out. Uh, I've ended up buying half an MBT retrofit kit and that's because I bought a few things to do it and I bought the wrong things and it was just costing too much money to try and save money. So let me, let me just say that. Doing this is a huge thing. And if you wanna do it yourself, like a full 100% DIY, there's a lot of learning to do. You need to get your head around coding ESIS, uh, which is basically F-series modules, which is all over the network, not the CAN bus that the E-series cars use. Uh, look, it is huge. However, I think it's worth it. If you're a proper nerd like me and you want ultimate integration and the best sort of infotainment system you can have, I don't think you can beat this, but it is expensive. It's it's very, very expensive to do this, but let me try and give you guys a little bit of an insight into how to do it, what modules to go for, and maybe where to buy a kit from, because it's it's a cool thing. Okay, so where do we start? E-Series, this car was originally a triple C vehicle. I upgraded it to a CIC unit. I cannot remember when I did it. I want to say 2020-ish. I upgraded it to the CIC because... I just wanted a nicer interface. I also wanted the CIC knob with the buttons. Uh, I had the Android unit set up so that these would actually work as shortcuts in the Android I had in the car. So they were useful having those buttons. And this knob always felt better than the, uh, the triple C knob. And everyone loves a good knob. The thing about my CIC retrofit, I never really did it properly. I just threw the unit in. I factory coded it with WinKFP and left it at that. Uh, I had aux in set up that come from the Android because most of the infotainment stuff, the navigation and everything I was doing through the Android unit. So I didn't need a true CIC integration because even doing a CIC retrofit was a huge thing five, six, seven, ten years ago. Now, with the MBT, I don't want to run the Android. Well, it's not that I don't want to, I don't need to, because the MBT Evo that I'm putting in this, which is an ID5 slash 6 unit, it's got full Apple CarPlay and touchscreen, and that's basically where I'm at these days with infotainment. I want CarPlay and I want touchscreen, and you can do it all with the one factory BMW unit, so that's what we're gonna do. Now, a little bit of a background into how I've ended up here. Yeah, like I said, I've been researching this for a few years. I actually had a subscriber contact me about buying their MBT retrofit that they got from a wrecked vehicle. So I bought from this lovely gentleman what he thought was a touchscreen, but it wasn't a touchscreen. It was an ID5 slash six unit, but not this one because it didn't have inbuilt GPS. So early MBT models, they used to use, someone please correct me if I'm wrong, but they used an ATM module. So early generations, it would get the GPS and a few other little bits of data. I think it was, I think it was GPS and 4G, I think, was basically the main things that would come through that ATM module. And you used to need an ATM module when you did an MBT retrofit, basically especially if you wanted to use the factory nav. Now, as the units progressed, they ended up integrating, or some models would integrate GPS into the unit. And that's what this one is. And I got this unit from Mr. BM Retrofits, Bryce. He's a mate of mine, I've known him for years. In fact, MBT Retrofits is really what spawned his business, even though I've just sort of spoken to him for E-Series coding stuff. Yeah, it was helping his mates finalize MBT Retrofits that they had purchased from other suppliers overseas that didn't work properly because the, the coding is a big deal. And even if you uh, buy the emulator module, which when you look into this, you sort of think if you buy the emulator module, which is this little thing here, the unit's gonna work in your car. Well, it'll power up, but that doesn't mean that it's coded correctly. It doesn't mean it's gonna show errors correctly. And there's still a hell of a lot of work to do on the actual programming side inside the unit 
to work with this in an E-series. And once the programming is sort of under control, you've still got to work out which hardware you're going to use because there are different uh, iDrive knobs and there's heaps of different screens. Now, I wanted to use a touch screen and I wanted it to go into my E92. You can see this shroud is from a 2011 335 because it's only the LCI 335s that don't have the plastic cover on the front. A lot of these triple C and CIC cars, they still had a, uh, a plastic cover so you can't touch the screen and that's not going to work. Oh, I should add, between buying the first MBT retrofit thing, I then bought one out of a 2019 M2 from a Racker, which I thought was a deal. Uh, that did come with a touchscreen. However, you can't use an M2 touchscreen in an E92. So I've ended up with a few things that are not very good. However, Bryce has been looking after me and he has basically supplied me these two units. Uh, and now he was gonna make me a plug and play harness. Unfortunately, he hasn't had time lately. He's been very busy with work and BM retrofits. And I thought, how hard can it be to make a wiring harness? Turns out it can be quite hard. I think I spent about 10 hours yesterday trying to get my head around the wiring in the E-Series, understand what everything is doing on the MBT side and actually make a patch harness. And what Bryce gave me, he gave me a uh, like a universal quad lock male to female adapter. And these are all the wires that I removed from the quad lock, which is now currently in the car. In fact, something I did, which I had no choice, but I wanted to try and make it modular. When Bryce makes these uh, plug and play harnesses for his customers, he uses all OEM nice looking connectors. I've used DTM, the small motorsport connectors, but they are quite large. I mean, they're great if the car ever goes swimming, they're not gonna leak water into them. It's definitely overkill. But anyway, I've used these connectors. It's all in there, but I'm not gonna take it out because it took me about 10 minutes to put it in there last night when I powered it up and we did have some success. Success is probably a strong word because all I did was power it up and get all the error codes from it not having an engine. We've still got a fair bit of work to do today. So as I was saying, there are different controllers. Uh, this is, in fact, both of the secondhand parts that I bought are touch controllers. With the, when I say touch, these have the ability to write letters and you can draw on this part of the pad. I'll be honest, initially I thought it would be a cool thing to do. You do need to buy another module. So the, the thing that processes the touch part of it is actually a separate computer and it was more money and I kind of figured I'm probably not gonna use it. Laura's got a 2019 X5. It has the touch screen thing, oh, the touch iDrive controller. We never use it. You always just uh, use voice control basically to input addresses and that sort of stuff. So I'm not going to bother with the touch part of it, but I still like this controller. The knobs feel great. They're fast responding and it's got all the other little shortcut menus. Um, what else we got? So these are actually all programmed via an Ethernet connection, not like the old CAN bus on the CIC versions. Now on an F series, you have Ethernet in your OBD port. I do not have OBD. I do not have Ethernet OBD, so I've bought this, which I'm gonna try and leave in the back of the unit, and if I ever need to do any updates or coding to this, I won't need to remove it. I'll just need to connect this to a switch, and then we can hopefully, well, Bryce can, he can then make any adjustments if I wanna add any features or change anything from how it is currently coded. The other thing, reverse camera. I want to do a reverse camera, Hopefully we can get that in the light. This is a second-hand unit, but it is out of, a, I think, a G-series. It is a high-definition camera, which is what I wanted. This thing's got like a, a 480p camera, and it just looks old-fashioned. I wanted the high-quality reverse camera. The only way to do it with one of these units, this is the latest generation of MBT Evo, uh, is with a genuine camera. These have... The GoPro's not gonna pick it up, so I'll overlay a picture. But they've got an eight pin connector and they're like microscopic pins. We use seven of those pins and that's what the network cable is for. So I'm gonna try and use this to connect the camera to the back of the unit. And as I sort of touched on in the intro to this video, as these units evolved, BMW integrated more and more features into the unit itself. So this has uh, basically a direct connection to the camera. It's got the network connection. It has nearly everything built inside it. So we actually connect to this for Wi-Fi. We connect to it for Bluetooth. The microphone connects directly to this. 
where this car, the microphone connects to the MOLF module in the back. In fact, that's the other cable I've got to make. I spent a couple of hours yesterday researching all of the different versions of E90 microphone setups. That was a waste of time. Uh, what I should have done is just what Bryce said. So whenever you do an MBT Evo, or whenever he does an MBT Evo retrofit into an E-Series, he just makes a new microphone cable and connects it straight to the quad lock on the back. In fact, that's all we're really connecting to this quad lock, which is a 40 pin connector, believe it or not. And all we've got, we've got seven pins that go to the camera. We have four pins that go to the iDrive controller. We have three pins that go to the microphone. And then I think about four pins that go to the emulator module. That's not true. It's about eight pins that go to the emulator module, but there's not actually that much that I'm connecting to this module. Uh, something with these cameras, which I was just touching on, it uses the later, video signal, which I'll flash up on the screen so I already forgot what it is, but it's also connected on the CAN bus. So for this to work with that module, it needs a CAN bus connection so they're on the same CAN bus network, and it needs the uh, data connection for the actual video display, which comes through, and that's why we're using the, the twisted pair, the network cable. Uh, if you're gonna be doing this, something that Bryce said, uh, he actually provides genuine camera cables when he does it, but he has also had to use in the past the network cable. Make sure if you're using network cable, it's not solid core because that's gonna break if it's in the boot. All right, so what have I got to do? Last night I powered up, I got all my error codes. It made noise. Uh, oh, that's the other thing, the amplifier. We'll get into that later, but the E-Series amp is not compatible with an MBT Evo head unit for phone calls, believe it or not. But I got a solution for that as well. All right, you know what I'm gonna do now? I'm gonna actually make a microphone cable. I'm gonna make the rear camera cable. I'll put this back in the car and I'll see if we get a rear camera connection. And I completely forgot, hopefully I'll be able to edit this in smoothly, but the all of the MBT units, they don't have a provision for a faceplate. So this is the F-Series faceplate that come with the subscriber that sold me his MBT kit. He had this, he just took it out of the car that he was wrecking or someone was wrecking, and you can see it has a four pin connection, which would normally go to the CAN bus network and then control volume and basically do what the buttons do. Obviously that doesn't look, well, it's not gonna fit into an E-Series. What you can do with the retrofit module that I got from Bryce, it will emulate the E-Series one. So that's the connector that comes out of the CIC. That's the faceplate. That's all gonna fit in the car nicely. It connects to the CAN bus emulator module and then it converts these signals to be what those signals were and then sends them to the unit. So when you do this, you do still need to keep your CIC old piece so that you can get the front plate. You need the front plate. I've done a lot of learning in the last two days. Anyway, we're getting there. All right, let me get these other two wires done and we'll see if we can get camera and make a phone call. It's been two and a quarter beers the cables are made. So let me show you where we're at with these cables. The reversing camera is in. Now this is actually a G-series camera and it's a much bigger camera than an E-series. This is the unit that was in there. So I had to make a slightly larger hole, hence the angle grinder, but that's been done. I've painted up the edges so we're not gonna have any rust. I did a little bit of a trick for people that are feeding cables through these things. I actually filled that with some WD uh, to help lubricate getting the network cable through. Because I'd already had a camera, actually I'm gonna shut this, because I'd already had a camera in there, it was pretty easy to just join the wires and pull them through. It didn't take too long. Everything is pinned. I've laid everything back in its place because we're gonna test it. So for now, I've just got the wires loose. I need to tidy all the wires up, but it's now got a microphone. It's got a camera wired in. It doesn't have a transmission or an engine, so I don't know if we're gonna be able to test the reversing camera, but we'll find out, we'll find out. It's time to power it up. The screen is in place. Uh, I've still got the faceplate just sitting there. This is just a test. We'll see how we're going. Okay. Warnings. We're getting the start up. Oh yeah. That's cool. So yeah, because this is definitely an M car. And we have a fuel supply error. Okay, we're gonna have lots of errors. I'm gonna go key on. Right there. More errors. This is what happened when I powered up last night. We got a lot of errors. We'll go back to home. Oh, that is sweet. 
I'm stoked. This is, uh, I mean, it's a, it's a bit wank, but that is this car with the wheels that will be on it, the dick ass brakes. That was and one of the main reasons I wanted to do the MBT retrofit, being able to customize all the menus, which is something the BM retrofits does. He puts all custom firmware on the units that he supplies and makes them the proper retrofit. This isn't half assed this is pretty gangster. All right, let's see if we can get rid of some errors. Come on, menu. Doesn't have any brakes at the moment. If I go over to notifications, uh, roadside assistance for drivetrain fault. Yep, that'll do that. It's got no engine. We've got brake system, adaptive headlights failure, drivetrain fault, there's no coolant, call SOS system failure, side daytime running lights fault, lights, fuel supply, washer fluid, vehicle check, engine oil, vehicle inspect. We've got all of the errors, but it doesn't have an engine, so that's fair enough. Uh, I don't actually think I can clear these. And the headlights are not on. Okay. All right. Uh, I guess what I need to check is the microphone. I don't know if this will have voice control. The steering wheel's not connected yet, so I can't do... That doesn't do anything. Um, I don't think it has Hey BMW. Hey BMW. It does not have Hey BMW. But that might be something we can set up. Mind you, it would need a data connection for voice controls to work that way. Um, I'll turn my phone on. Sorry, guys. This is genuinely first time I powered it up. I want to play with all the menus and stuff. Uh, let me connect my phone. Bluetooth on. Let's see if it picks it up and goes to CarPlay. So I did connect the phone last night. Okay, it's connected to the phone. But it's playing straight away. I'm just going to turn it down. Oh, we've got volume. We've got an actual volume bar. That's a cool thing that Triple C and CICs don't have. Um, okay, so if I go media, it takes me straight to CarPlay. Oh, that's sweet. That is what we want. And if I go, how do I get to there? I go over. Just push it, I guess. That's why I like touchscreen CarPlay. Ah, oh, and I can control my gate. Amazing. This is sweet. We're there. All right, we're halfway there. Now, I should be able to test the microphone here by going, hey, Siri, can you call Laura? Laura Bailey iPhone. Hello. Hello, I'm just doing an audio test with the internet. Can you hear me okay? Yes, perfect. Right. Is it doing the echo thing? Yes. Ah, oh, it is. Okay, that's the issue. All right. What I'm going to do, we'll swap places and we'll show them what the echo is, because I was worried about it. Well, I knew it was going to happen. So the echo, uh, I was warned about it, and I'd read about it as well, and it's something to do with the way that the uh, Logic 7 amp relays the data from the MBT. Uh, not, the, not the data, the audio signal. So there's, just, there's a bit of a delay. Unfortunately, with a phone call, the delay is so significant that the MBT unit hears the phone call audio and then repeats it. Let me get Laura and we'll swap places and you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. Okay, so this is just a test and you can hear the echo already. So I'm connected to the car. That's on speakerphone. That's on speakerphone. Can you hear me okay? Can you hear me okay? Yep. Right. I do you hear an echo? Do you hear an echo? No, I don't. Weird. And the your voice sounds clear. Sounds clear. Oh it's Pretty good. Okay, we are on Wi Fi call. Okay. All right, so yeah, that's what I'm, I'm going to end the test here. We definitely have an echo problem. We definitely have an echo problem. 
So yeah, it's a definite issue, and that's what happens if you do an MBT Evo. It might be both MBTs, all the MBTs, um, with a factory Logic 7 amp in an E-Series. But, like I said, I've got a solution to fix that. I have got a new amplifier, which I'm super excited about, which we'll talk about at the end of the video. However, uh, I also want to test the reverse camera. We'll see if we can see that. Now, obviously, I can't put it in reverse because there is no engine or gearbox. I can't even start the car, but hopefully... That's weird. We just got an error. Oh, parking assistance. Okay, so... I was hoping that I could just hit the parking assistance button and I would be able to see the reverse camera. However, half of the parking sensors are missing and I'm guessing it's in an error state because of that, which is annoying. I haven't got a front bumper on the car, so I can't actually test the rear camera, which is what I wanted to test because it's high definition. Ah, <sighs> damn it. All right, um, look, I'm gonna put the rest of the interior together. I'm pretty confident the wiring's gonna be correct. Fingers crossed, Every all everything else is working. The microphone's working. The iDrive's working. Obviously, the entire MBT thing is working. We've just got a lot of errors that we've got to fix. But that's because it doesn't have an engine. Okay, I'll put the rest of the interior back together, and I'll show you the new amplifier that I've got for this. See you shortly. So, I've been playing with this for a, probably a good hour. Um, having a good listen to it because of what we're going to do next, and I want to have a good baseline for where we are right now. And I've got to say... It's flawless. I do think, I think, don't quote me on this, but I think the audio is better. The audio is better on this than with the Android units. Obviously, the Android units were using an auxiliary input. Back when I got this car in 2019, I didn't have enough time to compare a CIC Combox install, and all I could really go off was plugging my iPhone into the aux port. And I have to say that... All of the Androids I've had were no different to plugging the iPhone into the aux port. It was never a worse quality sound. The I did find a little bit of a sound improvement when I deleted the MOLF. There was an issue with the MOLF. The MOLF is bypassed right now. And when I went to the aux in at the back of the CIC or Triple C at the time, it was definitely better. But this is better. Um, this just sounds really, really good. The, in this chest. the integration with the MBT, with what Bryce from BM Retrofits has done, is pretty spot on. I was playing with it just before, and I set the time, and it adjusts the time on the cluster. I can't fault anything with the way Bryce has coded the unit for my car. So what Bryce does do from BM Retrofits, he uh, gets your VIN number, basically decodes the vehicle, works out what factory options your car has. He'll also ask you a few questions he did with me because he knows I've messed with this car a lot. And then he configures the NBT Evo unit to work with all the factory options. That's not right, with all the options that the car currently has. So like everything just works. The only thing I'm missing out on right now is steering wheel controls. That's because I've got the F series wheel. But once I get the module that converts this to E series, I will then have steering wheel controls over what's going on there. I can't remember if I mentioned it in this video, but the main reason I've done this is for that. That little car logo right there. So obviously when you turn the car on, that's the home screen for... Actually, is that the home screen? Yeah, that is the home screen for the MBT Evo. Now, BMW will have an image normally of an F-Series right there, but Bryce... Being the wizard that he is, he has an E92 335 with the F80 M3 wheels and the red brake calipers, which is what will go back on this car. I mean, that is what this car looks like from the outside, and that's something that he offers. So if you get an MBT retrofit kit through Bryce, it's going to have all that. It's going to look like your car, and he's going to customize it to suit your exact setup. Ah, man, I'm excited. Oh, we have... A fully working touchscreen. Everything is good. Everything integrates exactly as it should. Uh, the... Yeah, look. I am so stoked with it. Let's go back to the home screen. We'll go my vehicle. If we go... If we go to settings... Uh, vehicle settings. So it's been configured for all the options that... 
the car originally had, so I can do the one touch. Basically, it's, it's E series features. When you have an F series, there's a few more options, I believe, in here. We've got speed warning, driving mode. I'm keen to see how this will work once I've got an engine in here, because at the moment I can't do much with this. Um, but I have a feeling that when I switch to sports mode, it will actually change the mode up here. I hope, anyway, we will find out. Auxiliary ventilation is an E-series thing. Vehicle tracking, I can't see this working. I can't select it. So that's a, that's a feature that's not gonna do anything. That's vehicle settings. iDrive settings, uh, you've got the thing for the Bluetooth connection, language, touchpad, which is disabled anyway. Well, I haven't got the module for it, so it's not gonna do anything. Um, actually, I did ask Bryce to code that in. So if I do get a cheap, if I, if I can find a cheap touchpad module for 50 or 60 bucks or something, I'll probably add it in uh, because it's easy to do and why not? But I didn't want to pay 300 that the wreckers wanted for it. Uh, date and time, units, we've obviously got these here. And sound, I was having a little play with the equalizer. Uh, Bryce has set it up so that we've got my Logic 7 equalizer options. He does a lot of, obviously this is a, a premium retrofit. So a lot of the customers that he has for this, they're not just doing the iDrive or the MBT side of it, they're doing the whole surround, the whole sound system. Bryce's demo car, he's got, I think it's Bowers and Wilkins. So he's done a full Bowers and Wilkins retrofit with the Bowers and Wilkins amp, and then he enables the Bowers and Wilkins uh, configuration settings for the MBT as well. It's, it's pretty cool what he's got going on. Notifications. We'll see how that works over time. Pop-up, software update. This can't work because, yeah, it's not going to work. Uh, I haven't mentioned it yet, but uh, something that Bryce does do with his iDrive units or MBT units that he supplies, he puts the latest firmware on that's going to do what the customer needs. So this actually has, and he said this is the first customer he has done with this software, but it's got the 2024 ID6 firmware. So I couldn't tell you what the difference is because this is the only one that I've played with with ID6, but hopefully it's got all the updates. There's no need to have online updates. Yeah, I mean, oh man, it's it's what I wanted. I wanted this OEM level of integration with the car and not have uh, basically two interfaces, one being an Android unit and then you go back to a CIC. It's a bit, it's a bit over the top, but I do like it. Uh, vehicle settings and obviously somewhere, where have got vehicle status? Oh, actually, if I go home, then we go to notifications. So these are all the error message. Everything seems to come through and it seems to work accurately. And it's fast. The main thing I've noticed while I've been playing with this uh, versus a CIC is just the speed. In, in fact, it's not just playing with this here. Uh, having cars come through, in fact, Alex's F80, he also has an MBT EVO upgrade from BM Retrofits. But that F80, uh, sick car, but playing with that car a little bit, just using the iDrive was just so much better than a CIC or an Android unit. It just, it just works and it works really, really well. So I do really like the the volume and the, when I was playing with it, it gives you entertainment, car audio, and then like maps volume, which you can set for each one. Um, we do have an FM radio, which should work. It does. And obviously all the function buttons work. If I go map, we'll go to the map. That is the BMW map. Uh, we don't have GPS because I'm still undercover at the moment. If we go navigation, that is to actually enter address details into the map. Media should take me uh, to the last source. But I go to CarPlay, that is there. And Com takes me to the CarPlay phone to make a phone call. It's, it's what I was expecting. One thing that has surprised me, it, it definitely sounds better than Oxin. Obviously, we've got Bluetooth, high definition audio, straight to the unit. It's not going through a load of modules. Um, yeah, the smoothness and the sound quality is great. 
and obviously the integration. That's why we do it. However, we've got the issue with phone calls. So <sighs> let's talk about the next thing, which I'm really excited about. And I probably should just highlight before we exit the vehicle, obviously this is connected to the NBT's CAN bus. So it's the KCAN 2, I think it is from memory. So these lights are actually being powered from the interface module that BM Retrofits has supplied. And if we turn the lights off, they go off. And it's instant. I mean, I'm pretty happy with this. The integration is spot on. Oof. Display is bright. The display is bright. All right. The amplifier. So the amplifier, I knew it was going to be an issue. Uh, well, Bryce told me that I can't stick with the Logic 7 amp. Unfortunately, to get a uh, F-series amp in Australia that was mossed was quite expensive, like fourteen or fifteen hundred dollars. Uh, so I started Googling and lo and behold, Beamatech Alpha One, they supplied the stereo that went into my 320D, which is going into the E70 because that thing pumps. I've actually still got that stereo, I've got to fit it. But they have just launched their MOST supported, they're calling it Lightwave, but it's their MOST amplifier. So up until this thing, which only came out a couple of months ago, they didn't have any support for fiber optic amps. They only worked on cars that had the basic hi-fi, which was probably not a bad move because the basic hi-fi ones were the ones that needed the upgrade the most. However, this is supposed to be a really good bit of kit. It supports every MOST amp. So everything from an E90 uh, right up into a G-Series. So part of me is hoping it to not be very good because the Harman Kardon in the G-Series is not very good. And if this makes the same difference that it made to the 320, I'm gonna need to buy one for that car as well. So yeah, I'm looking forward to trying this. We're gonna get it in. It's the normal Alpha One by Beamatech sort of spec. The, the packaging is, feels like an Apple product, if I can get it out. So we got the amp. This is for the E92, so it comes with a bracket ready to bolt into the car. It's actually quite a small amp. Mind you, I said the same thing about the, one that I put in the E92. We've got some decent power cables. The This is supposed to be a pretty beefy thing. We've got a plug and play harness plus the power. That is the install kit for the amp, I believe. Yeah, look at this. Oof, brings me back to my childhood. We've got proper amp wires and a keychain. Got the DIY essentials, which I kind of wish I remembered that I had that today. I've had this for about a month waiting for the MBT Evo thing to all happen. So, Next video is going to be the install of the amp. Make sure it fixes the call uh, echo issue that we're currently having with this. I'm worried that it might need some software upgrades from, maybe not upgrades, but a change on the software to an F-series configuration from Alpha One. We'll work out that as we go through, but I'm also keen to see what it sounds like. Don't get me wrong, this sounds good. This definitely sounds better than it ever has before without the sub in the boot, but yeah, the, the difference that that one made in the 320D, I'm excited about it. The E92 is coming together. The interior is pretty much done. I'm liking it. Oh, considering how this looked at the start of the year with all the, the uh, just from being sitting for so long, we've now got M2 seats. We've got MBT Evo, the nice iDrive controller. The seats in the back have actually come up pretty good. I did get this week the replacement Isofix covers down in the bottom there there are a few dollars on ebay so they were nice and cheap Ooh, we're getting there we're getting there guys sorry this series is taking so long um it's just been a crazy year but we've got to get full steam ahead i needed the interior done today next in line is going to be the headlights i have a full uh diy kit for the headlights so we've got lenses i've got an led beam which should go in there and should still work as an adaptive headlight. I've got new wiring harnesses and I've got new F-Series style DRLs. This thing's turning into a bit of an F-Series. Probably should have bought an F-Series. I love it. Uh, but yeah, headlights next weekend. And then it's into work to get the engine in. And of course, the port injection kit, which is the big thing. I'm excited about it. I get my license back in about eight weeks. We've got to get it finished. We've got a timeline. Thank you for watching. Any questions about the MBT retrofit, let me know. It is 
as I said at the start of the video, a bit of a monumental task. And yeah, I was too girly to try and do it myself. I went for a kit from BM Retrofits and I'll probably recommend you guys do that as well. Well, not necessarily from BM Retrofits. If you're in Australia, yes, but I, the, the amount of custom coding that you need to do and you need to have knowledge on, on the ESIS side to get the MBT Evo to integrate properly through the emulator is quite significant. And yeah, like I said at the start of this video, Bryce literally started BM Retrofits because he was fixing MBT retrofits that weren't coded properly for other customers um, that have bought from other companies. So yeah, just keep that in mind. It's, it's a pretty big thing, but I'm really happy with the level of integration. The screen looks brilliant. I don't know what that screen's from, but Bryce told me it was a 2020 model or 2021 model BMW screen. And he won't tell me what it's from annoyingly because I wanted to go and buy one myself. But yeah, just keep that in mind. Getting the hardware right is a bit of a challenge. You've got to get the right actual hardware number to get the inbuilt GPS. Then you've got to get the right screen that will go into an E92 or you can you can just buy a kit. And I think I wish I bought the kit. And considering how long it took me yesterday to make the harness, I wish I just waited for Bryce to do the harness because even just wiring the harness in was huge. But we're getting there. Guys, I'm rambling. I'm excited. I cannot wait to take this thing out to roll racing again. Can't wait to drive it again. Ooh, she's starting to get there. Once the headlights are done, engine in. I might do some work on the outside before it goes to work. Uh, maybe get the wheels and suspension and brakes done here because that's relatively easy to do where it is. We'll see. We'll see. But I'll bring you guys along for the rebuild. Thank you for watching. Catch you on the next one.